Flores Island, Indonesia. What an incredible island to explore by motor scooter. So that's exactly what I did. I hired a bike from Labuan Bajo on the west coast and headed east towards Kelimutu Volcano, which was in Alert 2 status at the time. Travelling along the north coast via Riung through Bajawa and on to Moni, then returning west via the main Transflores Road all the way back to Bajo, where I'd left my main luggage. The complete round journey would take me nine days and cover 1180 kilometres. G'day, well, I'm on the road to a place called Pota. And I'm somewhere between uh, Rioc and Pota, which is about another 45 kilometres away. Uh, not much there, but I'm going to continue on today to Riung. Riung is the gateway to the 17 Islands National Park, where boat tours out to the beautiful islands off the north coast of Flores can be arranged. There were some lovely views along the coast as I headed east, and I would overnight in Riung at a place called Café Del Mar. So this is my trusty horse, it's a Yamaha uh, N-Max 155cc. Not the best of bikes, it's been dropped several times, you can see scratches all around, but the worst thing is, it's got this uh, horrible knock in the front end. Now, so much so that I, I had to call into the mechanic last night uh, and he exchanged the front bearing there. I'm about 35 kilometers from Riung, where I'll spend the night and I'll use that as a base for maybe a, a, a trip out on the water tomorrow at the 17, uh, 17 Islands National Park. So um, as you can see, the, you know, the landscapes are pretty, pretty nice around here. There's been some nice views. And what I really dig is all the, uh, the kids and even the adults are very friendly, uh, always waving and yelling out, hi mister. So it's really cool to sort of bike around uh, the island of Flores. So far anyway, it's really been good. So yeah, tomorrow uh, I plan to have a rest day uh, and maybe just a, a, bit of, a bit of swimming and snorkeling. Well, let's see if the next guy that goes past does a toot and a wave. They usually do. Hey buddy! There you go. A lot of young'uns around, they love it when you wave and some of them, they, they get so excited they start screaming. It's amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm always sort of waving and sticking my hand out and I'll slap it as I go past. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm nearly there. About um, six or seven kilometres to go and uh, I thought I'd just stop here, uh, lovely view. Um, it really is a, a gorgeous place, Flores Island. Well the tarmac's run out and we're on the, on the dirt now. So I've been about uh, five k's along this. Hopefully it'll come to an end soon. And because uh, my rear end, oh, here we go, look at this, lovely. <laughs> oh, that's a lot kinder. Here we are, I've found myself a place, 400 rupee a night with air conditioning. That's all I need. That's less than $40, Aussie. There we go, not too shabby. Yeah, so that was a pretty exhaustive ride. Um, about a hundred and oh, close to 180 kilometers along some pretty um, you know pretty challenging road at times lots of uh, twists and turns and very narrow road 
The next morning I did a boat tour of the 17 Islands National Park. While I didn't see all 17, we stopped at some lovely ones. First stop, Bat Point. There they go. They're taking flight. Amazing! Holy dooly! Quite incredible. Look at them. They're just everywhere. Welcome to Bat Point. Oh man, you wouldn't want to be stuck here for the night. Bang, my second stop this morning, and uh, the first stop was a, a great little snorkeling stop where I saw very colourful coral and fish. So, uh, you know, it's, it's only about 10 o'clock now, so there's still plenty more to see. Um, that island just over there behind me, that one there, is called uh, Rutong, Rutong Island. And uh, there's uh, another one on the other side called Tiga, which uh, we'll be probably seeing shortly. So we're going to have a bit of a meal here, I think. <laughs> Spicing it up with some homemade mixture. Tuna and Trevally. Okay, well, we've had our lunch. I had barracuda, tuna, and trevally with eggplant, salad. I had some calamari, all barbecued on the hot coals over there. So, doing all right. We've been on uh, this island, Tembang, for a, a couple of hours now. And we're going to move over to Nunsa Rutong, which is that one over there. There we are, the view from the top of Rutong Island. <laughs> oh good. And that's the island we were just on. Tembang. Now yeah, we're on Rutong. After spending a couple of nights in Ryung, I hit the road again on day four to move on to Bajawa. Along the way, I couldn't resist calling into the Mangaruda Natural Hot Spring before continuing on to my accommodation in the hills outside of the town of Bajawa. Not too shabby. Nice little pit stop before I uh, book into my accommodation at Bajawa. To, to, today's been a pretty laid back day, only doing about 90 kilometres. Although the road was uh, pretty iffy in some places, like bad, bad dirt road, uh, you know, get down to 10 k's an hour, just taxing on the body and on the little Yamaha I'm on. But uh, we got through it and uh, should be all plain sailing now from here to Bajawa. After checking into my hotel, once I saw this volcano, I had to get to a viewpoint at sunset. 
The views don't come much more spectacular than this. Mount Ineria, uh, near the township of Bajawa on Flores Island in Indonesia. This is just absolutely stunning. Just on sunset. Now this volcano is dormant, but uh, there was some smoke reported coming out at the top there in June 1911. So that's, uh, you know, 113 years ago. Since then, nothing. According to Wikipedia, uh, it is supposed to have erupted uh, approximately 8050 BC. So um, I think uh, it's pretty safe. She's not going to burst a top. Not tonight anyway. Wow, I mean, this is just amazing. Um, a bit of a rough road to get up here, but if you're on the island of Flores and near this town of Bajawa, you've got to come out here. It's not a bad sunset, don't you think? The next day I ate breakfast viewing this lovely panorama at the Manu Lalu Hotel near the town of Bajawa. The bed and breakfast was great value and the views of Mount Ineria were a sheer delight. Manu Lalu has wonderful accommodation for different types of budgets. It is however 17 kilometres from the township of Bajawa itself. On day five, I set off down the road again towards my next stop, the small mountain village of Moni, near Kelimutu Volcano. Along the way, I stopped for lunch by the sea at a coastal spot known for its natural blue stones. This is Bluestone Beach. Obviously given its name for the uniquely blue stones that get washed up on this black sand beach. I'm just outside of Ende and uh, this is the south coast of Flores and um, I'm just amazed at the, the colours of these stones. They're just quite unique to this area. So they, uh, they actually collect them and not sure what they do with them, but uh, obviously sell them for decoration of some sort. There we go. Wonder what gives them their blue colour. Well, apparently this very beach is quite unique and well renowned for these extraordinary blue stones. They've captivated visitors and even scientists for many years. The stones are believed to originate from the adjacent cliffs which are of volcanic origin, but the exact process that gives them their distinctive blue colour is still a subject of scientific debate. As I approached the town of Ende, and then ventured into the mountains beyond, there were numerous sites on the main road where avalanches had occurred from the cliff sides. Flores Island has quite mountainous terrain and is susceptible to road collapses and avalanches, especially after significant rainfall. Several factors can contribute to this, the island is known for its seismic activity, which can weaken the stability of the surrounding rock formations. The type of soil in the region tends to also be quite loose and clay rich. Whatever the reason, it pays to be on your guard when riding through here. Here's an example of, uh, on a miniature level anyway, of some of the, the landslides that always uh, seem to be happening here along the uh, Trans Flores uh, uh, Road, and um, you know, on various occasions, I've been um, been held up. Uh, you know, once with a two-hour delay, uh, just just with the road maintenance guys trying to patch things up. Um, so it's, you know, the the work seems to be a lot uh, reactive. You know, they don't seem to sort of plan things much. Just as they patch one up. Uh, there's sort of always another one uh, happening somewhere because there's a lot of um, steep cliffs uh, sort of overhanging the roads uh, a lot of places. 
Here's some more recent work of um, what I'm talking about here with these avalanches. And uh, I don't know where the workers are today, but uh, looks like they've cleared this bit, which is good. Between the stops for road works to clear the fallen rock and soil on the road and an additional pit stop in Ender to top up the little radiator with coolant, it was starting to get late into the afternoon when I reached the top of the mountain pass near my destination for the day, the township of Moni, the base from which I would explore Kelimutu Volcano's three colourful craters. I had to get there first, and it soon got to the stage where I was struggling to see very far ahead of me as I rode through the fog, with my glasses completely whited out from the misty mountain air.